Someone who knows Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and other officials in Georgia quite well, Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Lieutenant Governor. You saw your colleagues Raffensperger and Gabe Sterling take the stand today. You say that you also received threats from Trump and his supporters. Was there anything that you heard today that surprised you at all? Well, it certainly was refreshing to hear the confidence in their voice as they just recalled the, those events in and around that, that very serious period of time in Georgia. Uh, you know, just a matter of syllables, they debunked the, the far-fetched conspiracy theories that were launched into the public domain by a former president that was more interested in saving his, his ego than he was about saving America. Uh, not a lot of new information. One part that was new to me was how granular uh, it was that Donald Trump played. His ground game was individual calls to state legislators around the country. Uh, Speaker Bowers out in Arizona uh, it was one of those instances that recalled that. Uh, that. That brought back some memories for me, too. We also saw the real-world impact of the lies from President Trump and his allies, the two former election workers in Fulton County who have had their lives just upended, really. Uh, Ruby Friedman and her daughter, Shay, uh, they say that they still don't feel safe going out in public. Let's take a listen to what Ruby had to say. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you. The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one, but he targeted me, Lady Ruby, a small business owner, a mother, a proud American citizen. What's your message to Lady Ruby and Shay tonight and other election workers who may now be fearful of, of doing their work? Well, I'm glad to see them moving through it. Uh, certainly, it's a difficult period of time for all of us who did and said the right things. Uh, but you know what? I can't imagine being Donald Trump and watching that play out. I can't imagine uh, if he has any sense of, of humanity in him, uh, what it would feel like to do that to somebody's life, all because you just wanted to pitch a lie to save some face, uh, to try to off-gas your loss. Uh, that's hard to believe, and, and I don't think history is going to be kind to that. You've, of course, been called a rhino, Republican in name only by President Trump and many of his allies. I'd like to play you a clip from Missouri GOP Senate candidate Eric Greitens. I'm Eric Greitens, Navy SEAL, and today we're going rhino hunting. The rhino feeds on corruption and is marked by the stripes of cowardice. This video would seem to only openly encourage political violence. Are, are you concerned that rhetoric like this could lead to real violence? That 30-second video is everything that's wrong with the Republican Party and politics in general, right? I think a majority of Americans want to have somebody out there that can figure out how to fix this inflationary problem, how they can help afford gas and groceries uh, and understand the world complexities that are going on around us in every continent. Uh, that's what we need is a gravitational pull towards leaders like that, not not the Eric Brighton stuff. You've written a book urging the GOP to move past this type of rhetoric. And, and since the 2020 election, the Texas state GOP party just passed a resolution calling President Biden an illegitimate president, more GOP members who believe that the big lie, uh, they have become uh, primary winners. Are you concerned in the 2024 uh, election that the guardrails, so to speak, that many say held up our democracy may not hold again? Well, I wrote the book because I didn't want to just complain about the, the, the shallow leadership of Donald Trump during the post-election debacle. I wanted to have a plan going forward. And I think what we're going to watch play out between now and 2024 is two very distinct lanes starting to develop for the Republican nomination for the White House. And, uh, you know, I think if we splash enough truth serum on Re Republicans right now, they would all admit that the election wasn't rigged and Donald Trump's bad for our brand. Just like if you splash enough truth serum on Democrats, they would admit that Joe Biden is the wrong direction for their party and for the country. These guys wouldn't be CEOs for any business in America, and we deserve better. I am curious, though, if you don't have that truth serum that you're talking about, uh, what that means. Do you believe that there is a place in the Republican Party uh, as long as, as President Trump is the mantle holder for someone like you? Because I, I do know that you've decided not to, to run again. Yeah, I'm not running again for re-election because I want to have a conversation with America and not just Georgia. I'm so committed to trying to fix and heal and rebuild this Republican Party that I'm willing to not run again to do that. Uh, Donald Trump is not going to be the president again. It's just not going to happen. And if we stub our toe and try to nominate him again, uh, it's going to just lead to chaos and confusion. 
And quite honestly, I think Georgia was a great representation of what that looks like. Uh, Brian Kemp won and beat, quite honestly, maybe Donald Trump's best friend, David Perdue, beat him by 50 plus points because leadership matters. And I think America hopefully continued to, to gravitational pull back towards leadership. You know, kind of your, your pulse, your ear to the ground in Republican circles. What gives you such confidence that, that the former President Trump wouldn't run and, and successfully win again? So history is a great predictor of the future. History shows us that virtually almost no president, with one exception, has ever, even when they left with greater poll, poll ratings and, and favorability ratings than Donald Trump had, has ever been able to build the steam going forward. But, but also, I think this whole January 6th hearing really is, is that catalyst moment that has allowed us to see that there's got to be a better direction for the party and for the country. Every day he's out of office, the time helps heal the wounds, and we're going to move in a better direction, I promise you. Lieutenant Governor, Governor Jeff Duncan, we thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.